And it's exactly some 30 minutes after 8. You're still on the AM show. Our show is proudly brought to you every weekday morning by Mexi Coffee. Now, time for us to talk land. And my guest is president of the Ghana Institution of Surveyors. His name is James Datsun. Mr. Datsun, good morning. Good morning. Mm. So what role do you play in land acquisition, the inst institution of surveyors? Thank you. The Ghana Institution of Surveyors is a professional body that regulates the practice of surveying in, in Ghana. Regulates the practice, practice of surveying. surveying. What does it mean? So, so before you can call yourself a surveyor, mm -hmm. you must have undergone training, professional training, which is conducted by the Ghana Institution of Surveyors. And there are three groups of uh, surveyors. We have the land surveyors, those who are involved in, uh, you see them on the road with the poles and measuring, uh -huh. yeah, and then preparing the site plans yeah. you know, for the indenture. You know, I just have to break that, break it down to a layman's mm -hmm. language, and then we have the quantity surveyors. If you are building, okay, they determine or advise you on for budgetary purposes that you need X amount of cement, the blocks, sand. That's the, the quantities are going into um, the construction, and then we have the valuation and estate surveyors. They are the ones who, for example, if you have a multi-story building and you're looking for tenants. If you want to sell your property, you want to determine the value of your property if government has acquired your land, or even if an individual land institution has acquired your land, they will advise you on how much compensation, you know, hmm. is due to you. Okay. So we, we do quite a bit of work. Hmm. Um, I guess we're very familiar with the first and the second one, sort of m very familiar in terms of um, land acquisition mm -hmm. with the very first one. The one that has to do with the uh, indenture, particularly. Yes. What stage is that in land acquisition? Well, first of all, you would, if, for example, you own land mm -hmm. and I you want to buy your land, you have to give me copies of your document, the site plan especially, which has been prepared by the surveyor. Mm -hmm. And then I will conduct an official search at the Lands Commission. You know, to find out, to confirm that indeed you are the owner of that land. How long would the search usually take? Well, it depends. If, for example, you are the first person to register, then it's only one transaction. But if the property has changed hands several times and over a long period, then the records, you know, are, if there are multiple records, you have to search maybe four, five, six stages, mm. and it could take a bit of time. And then sometimes, you know, we, the Lands Commission operates in a predominantly manual environment. So pulling records, pulling sheets, ledgers, and things like that could, could also take a, a couple of days. Hmm. And so that, it really depends on what is recorded. Okay. Yes. So you're saying that um, after that search, mm -hmm. and then? If it is confirmed that, that indeed you are the owner, then we will bring in solicitors um, to prepare. But even before then, you know, every land has to be put a part to a particular use. So you would um, have to find out from the assembly because that's where all layouts, you know, are prepared and lodged. So that would uh, lay out the planning scheme. Mm. Yeah, let me put it that way. That is what determines what the land has to be used for. So, for example, this is a commercial building. Okay, mm -hmm. it's zoned for that purpose. There are areas that are zoned residential. There are areas that are zoned for health purposes and all of that. So if you, if you are buying it for a school, then you need to confirm that indeed it is zoned for a school or it can be used for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the lawyers will come in and prepare the, what we call the indenture. That is the agreement But you know, usually when you're buying a land, mm -hmm. you're given the indenture. Mm -hmm. So all these things must have been done before you came into the picture. Is that it? Because it, it looks to me as is a, is a readily cooked something that is given to you. And that's how come about three, four people can have the same document. You know, if an indenture is given to you, mm -hmm. then it has to be the indenture, a copy of the indenture of the person who is selling to you. Mm -hmm. Because you are 
coming in as a potential buyer. Mm -hmm. So you can't have an indenture. Okay. Your indenture comes in where you've, you've agreed on the terms. For example, I'm leasing it to you for 60 years or 99 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be paying X uh, rent per annum and you're using it for this purpose. You have to commence development within three years and all of that. So that is what is documented. And then we all sign. We have witnesses who sign it, mm -hmm. who witness for us. Then that document is what you will submit to the Lands Commission for registration. So that same document that is given to the landlord, that is what usually we find, you know, about three people having the same thing. If, if, because if, I, ha I have seen people mm -hmm. who say, okay, I bought the land from this person and mm -hmm. this is the document to show. Right. And another person has got the same document, you know, to also, okay, this is what they gave me when I bought the land. Yes, you need to. That's what they gave you. Mm -hmm. But did you register it? So because when when you're given when you're given the documents, mm -hmm. you then have to go you, exactly. You have to submit and then re-register it, it so that there's something we call the root of title. So if I was the first to register mm -hmm. and I sell to you, if you do a search, my transaction will show. Okay, and then if you register yours, yours will also show as a second one. So if if you also sell it to another person and he also goes to register, you will notice that if you go and do a search. That root of title will show from the person who sold to me, to myself, and then to you, and then you to the other person. That's mm. the way it goes. Mm. So we always advise that when you go through all these processes and you have your indenture, please proceed to have it registered. In a lot of situations, people buy the land, and especially where the owner is, uh, is known to have sold the lands in all the area, and then you are building without hassle. Nobody come to disturb you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go ahead and build without bothering to register because this is my house and I live in it. But you don't have title to it. Okay, so for example, if you want to go to the bank for a mortgage and you're using your property as collateral, the question is, is your document registered? If it's not registered, then you have to now go and register it before the bank can deal with you. Mm. So it's very essential that we have these documents um, registered. And that is why we keep on educating the public. Sometimes you do a survey in an area, even government residential areas, where people have assigned or sold their, their lands or properties to, to um, third parties. Most of them, because it's a house or an uncompleted structure, they go ahead and build and then they live in it. If you go to the record, it's still in the name no, of the person. Or the, I mean, oh, the first person okay. who it was leased to, mm. you know, which is not proper. Then our records are not up to date because the records must reflect the ground situation. Mm. So why, why does it, you know, it looks like there are a lot of frustrations in the process of registering land. And that is what is preventing people sometimes from registering it. Yes, the, that, that is true. Um, to a very large extent, and as I said, it's because we, we operate in a typically manual environment. You know, the processes can be slow mm. and frustrating. But and this excuse has been given over and over and over and over again. Yes, but you see, you would observe if, if you visited any of these uh, land sector agents, if you went to a lands commission now, uh, you will see work in progress because we are migrating, we are automating the records. You know, so that it would be easy, for example, if you came in and you, you wanted to conduct a search on plot number 10, North Legon residential area, you have the site plan, you know, they just key it in, and then all the records will show they print it out for you, and then mm -hmm. you walk away. You see, these are the things that we are doing. But, of course, you need to, it's a, it's a slow process because we've had records um, for over 100 years. And you can imagine the state of some of these. Mm. So those that are torn and are worn out, we have to be careful, scan them, you know, bring them back to life. So it's a process. And the public will have to bear with the institutions that are doing these things. Mm. There's something very important I want to ask you. If I'm working, I mean, when I'm registering land or when I acquire a piece of land, it means that throughout the process I'll be working with a, a surveyor. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. Okay. You How do I know the person that I'm working with? really is a surveyor? Well, we have something we call uh, members in good standing. Every year as a surveyor, you have to pay your annual subscription. You have to um, go through continued professional development programs to update yourself. 
and once you are certified then you're a surveyor of course you can ask the person to show proof that he's a surveyor sometimes at the Ghana Institution of Surveyor Secretariat we get requests from the public individuals and organizations for us to confirm that this person I'm dealing with is indeed a surveyor okay so for example if we need a valuer to to value this property and he has to certify as having value the property that person must be a member in good Sunday mm. you know, of, of the Ghana Institution of okay. So we can always get back to you and cross-check if the person that I'm working with, De definitely. it's, it's in definitely. good standing. Yes. Or is he a member of the Ghana Institution, Institution of Surveyors? Of surveyors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the last time I touched on this subject, I spoke to a lawyer who had done a lot of work you know, with, with land, okay. land cases. And the question that I asked her, and I would want to also ask you is, how relevant is the yellow card? Oh, okay. See, when you lodge your document mm. for indenture at the land registration division, what we call the land title office, it's not land registration office of the lands commission. That is what is given to you, you see, for you to keep. And any time you're going to check on the stage where they reach with the process, okay, you have to be identified. And the reference is your yellow card, uh. the number on it. So it's like, it's like going to the hospital and you, you are given that small card. Anytime you go, that's what you take, and then they go and re retrieve your folder. Mm. It works just the same way. So how come there are times that two or more persons would have the same yellow card to the same property? No, you, it will not be the same yellow card like this is number one and this one too is number one. Yeah, but a yellow card it, to the same property. Exactly. Then we have to go into it. You know, there are times that different persons have sold to them. There are times that the survey work itself, they may be next door neighbors, but the site plan is wrongly done. Okay, or the same plan what no, number one is edged and for the other one is the same number one. It's not always that um, we attribute it to fraud. Sometimes it's just a, a human error and then it can be corrected. Mm. You know, and then there are situations too where somebody goes to court and then the court rules in his favor. So obviously I am holding a yellow card and because of the judgment another person, okay, now has superior title and then mine will have to be dropped. So there are always reasons why the a conflict may exist as far as the yellow cards are concerned mm -hmm. or as far as um, the transaction on the land is concerned. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think the education the last time was the fact that you have a yellow card does not mean you can commence building. No. You see, to, to build, you must have a permit. And to be given the permit, mm -hmm. you must have title. Okay. Can I just say that that is not the issue now. Some persons do not have titles to the lands, yet they have permits and they've built. Yes, because it is, it is, it is true. I mean, there are some records that show that about 80% of the properties that we see all around mm. do not have titles. So why, why is it so? What do you think? Well, you see, there are institutional challenges and the cultural challenges as well. And then the, the general economic situations. If you submit your application for a permit and then the, the process is delaying or appears to be delaying and then you see that, oh, building material prices are going up mm. or maybe nobody is coming to check whether I'm building or not. The inspectors are not there because they are going over, they're going to so many places. So it takes them a long time to come there. So we start building, you know, and especially when you are building and nobody comes to challenge you. And then everybody just keeps on building and building and building. Mm -hmm. And as I said, even where I have title and I transfer to you, you take the indenture, you go home, and then you start building. So when we do the survey, we notice that a lot of people are there, but they don't have the title. The title is in the person who sold, the name of the person who mm -hmm. sold to them. So these are all the challenges. And I think it bothers on uh, education. You know, the awareness is not there. Once you buy the land and you build and then nobody challenges you, then that's it. You know, but we have to ensure that we get permit, you know, before we, we commence development. You see, in that case, even if you are a genuine developer and tomorrow 
something happens um, and your land has to be used for, say, road expansion, for example, you'll be paid mm. adequate compensation. But if you have nothing by way of title, then how do you prove that you are the owner of the land? Mm. See, these are the challenges that, that we have. And, and you see, and that's why we always recommend that as much as possible, let us use the services of surveyors or let's use the services of professionals in the built environment. You know, how come you want to build your house and you will not use a surveyor? What happens if you build your house and you don't have the right mix? Mm. You see a lot of cracks in buildings. Co couldn't it also be because some people perceive you know some people just sit back and think okay because it will be expensive to go through a surveyor are you expensive you get value for money that is what i would say <laughs> but you see there, there are situations where we we offer free consultancy as an institution okay so it depends on um what is on the table you know if, if you came in and you wanted professional advice of course we'll give you the professional advice and the fee will be there for you to pay. Mm. That is how a surveyor also lives. And that is why he will give you the expected service because he's liable if something goes wrong. You know. So we have to use the services of surveyors at all times and as, as often as, mm. as possible. You know. Even when you have completed your building, you can always go and consult your surveyor um, when something goes wrong and mm. then he will give you the right service. So say you got your land from an estate developer, do you mm. have to go through them to get the title or you can totally on your own go to, go to the land commission? Well, it depends. If the, some estate developers, they buy the land in bulk mm -hmm. and then they have the various parcels. So what they do is that they, they sell all of them out so they can put all together and register on behalf of those who have bought from them. Um, especially those that build the estate houses. And then we have situations too where they just service the land and then you will go in there. Once they have registered their title, it doesn't really matter. They will do the transfer document for you and it's easy to have it registered because they have already registered their interest mm. in the land. So, big question, how much does it cost to duly register a piece of land and then have the title? Well, it depends. It depends on size of the land. It depends on location. Mm -hmm. As, I mean, if you're in Accra, when you are doing land title, you go to a land commission, there are statutory fees that you will pay, you know, some 50 CDs, some 150, and then you will do the, your stamp duty. Stamp duty depends. It's an assessment based on the value of the property. You know, so it all varies. But the point is that these are all statutory fees and they are displayed in the offices of the Lands Commission. You will see that. Oh, are they? they you yes. know, sometimes when you're working through a surveyor, they will tell you, okay, bring 500 or bring 1,000 or that kind of thing. And, you know, I don't know if it's maybe or it's not appropriate to ask them, what are you going to use the 500 for? I mean, it's to register the land, but they cannot break it down for you. It is your right to ask. They can always give you what is the official fees, the statutory fees to pay, mm -hmm. and then what is their own fee. And let me also state that in the system now, there are so many people who are calling themselves agents, estate agents, or surveyors, who are indeed not surveyors. But they are all in the system. You know, so you need to be careful. I mean, just as you go to the harbor and, and all sorts of people are working there helping you to clear your car, we have the same thing at the land sector. Mm. You know, so you need to know, as I said, you can ask, it is your right to ask, to, to demand that, please let me know what the official fees are and then what your own charges to are. You know, sometimes you don't want to be too pushy after all the person is helping you. Yes, you see, if the person delivers, then there's no problem. Mm. But in a lot of situations where these people are not qualified and you run into problems and then... And the worst part is that before you find out, they would have taken today, bring me money, tomorrow bring me money, when the, they cannot fix the problem because they don't have a, a clue how to fix it because they are not qualified. So can we come through the institution to get a surveyor? Yes, definitely. There, there are several times that uh, people have made requests to the institution and that we provide the service mm. and now you pay a fee to the institution. And then part of it will go to those who render the service. Mm. So how do we get you? I mean, Ghana Institution of Surveyors sounds so plush and everything. And um, 
very ordinary people, can they get in touch with you and how? Well, you can get in touch with Ghana Institutional Surveyors. Um, I can straight away mention the telephone number, which is 220291. Two two zero two nine one. one. Accra, That's the office number. Yes, Accra. yes, in Accra, and we are located in in Adabraka. But that is a temporary location. This year, we are moving into our own building, our own secretariat, which is at South Legon, next to Food and Drug Authority. Mm. Yes. So okay. then, then we'll become more visible and render mm. uh, service. Now our people. broadcast is in the whole of the country, very tiny corners of the country. So mm -hmm. how visible are you in the other regions? Yes, we have associations in all the regions, in all the regions. And we have our members who also practice in all the regions. You know, um, you have private uh, surveyors in all the regions. Mm. And then also you may not necessarily be residing in Kumasi or Tema or Accra, but you can work in any part of the country. Okay. So our surveyors okay. work everywhere. There are some who are in Kumasi working in Takradi, some in Takradi working in Kumasi, in Accra working in Boga, mm. Wa, everywhere. Okay. And you, you can help us uh, when we get the land to register it, and then you can also help when, in the building process itself. See, that is the problem. Mm -hmm. You said when you get the land. Before you get, Before a you land, get the land, you have to consult the surveyor. Mm. I mean, I spoke to somebody in the U.S. only yesterday who said, I've paid $20,000 for a land, and I'm bringing the papers for you to check for me. You want to turn me into a magician? It should have you been know, checked exactly, before. You know. But you know how it is. When, when, when you see the land, somebody has also seen it. So you want to be fast. You want to pay quickly so that you'll be the first person to own it. You have to be careful when they tell you this is a hot cake, this is going. If it is yours, definitely it will come to you. You have to go through the process. Mm. If the person is indeed the owner of the land, the person must understand that it's a lot of money. In a lot of situations, property investment is the most expensive you make in your lifetime. You know, anybody who has built will, 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 will tell you this. So you have to necessarily take your time and do the right thing. So how quickly can you do the search for me to know if this land owner actually owns the land? Well, if, if there is no problem, you can do a search in, in 48 hours. Okay. Yes. Mm. But how do we, you know, so who, who give the prizes, who price the, the lands? Well, Does the commission come in, uh, the institution, or is left to the land the landowners? Well, there's something we call the open market. You see, properties, um, land values or property values are determined by the market. Mm. Okay, and so it is what the market says. The open market. It's just a um, supply and demand thing. Okay, so you always hear, oh, if you go to Ajinga, no, it's now. 40,000 mm -hmm. CDs or 50,000 because that is what is on the market. If you go there, the people will tell you that I bought mine for so much and then that becomes a going rate. So it's what the market determines. Okay. You know. Okay. Mr. Datsun, thank you for the education. When we get uh, a lot more questions for you, we'll invite you and I hope that you'll be here. Definitely. Yeah, thank you so All much right. for thank your you time. Too. All right, so you All stay right. with us, stay with us, okay. stay with us. Right. We'll come back and give you the headlines on the air.